Welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with tremendous truths and humongous lies. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a man whose TV show is called Richard Bacon's Beer and Pizza Club. Not only is it good fun, but if it comes on TV more than five minutes late, you get free garlic bread. It's Richard Bacon! <laughs> And uh, the man who gave us Touch the Truck, Pets Win Prizes and Hole in the Wall, yet still no BAFTA. It's Dale Winton! <laughs> and on Lee Mack's team tonight, a TV presenter who's so immersed in the culture of horse racing, when she buys a new pair of shoes, it's all she can do to stop herself nailing them on. It's Claire Balding! <laughs> A comedian and star of the very realistic Call the Midwife. I didn't watch it myself. I just stayed the other side of the screen and offered encouragement. It's Miranda Hart! <laughs> and so, uh, we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. And to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've got no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Dale is first up tonight. OK. <laughs> As a child, rather than sleeping with a comfort blanket or teddy bear, I slept with a potato. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Mack, what do you think? <laughs> Was it the same potato or did you, did you have different potatoes over the years? Well, that was the problem, because you get attached to a potato. <laughs> so, when you get attached to a potato, it's rotting a bit, but you comfort. It's like you, you, your teddy bear smells of your old teddy bear, mm. or whatever it happens to be. The potato is my favourite potato, and I used to draw on it. So it was one potato the whole time? The actual truth is, it was taken away from me, and I cried and I cried and I cried, but they threw it out. So it took me, like, another three or four weeks to get used to the new potato. Dale, do they have names, your potatoes? No. You slept they... with a potato that you didn't even know its name? Well... Oh. <laughs> yes, <Well>. slag! <laughs> <laughs> Did you hug them? Did you have them close to your face? I used to put it on the pillow like that and I used to bash it. Bash it? <laughs> Why did you bash it? Is that how you show love, Dale? <laughs> <laughs> What's Probably. the bashing? Well, that's... well I, used to... I used to like the dent it made in the pillow. Oh, so you'd bash it onto the pillow and then so, you'd and sleep... And I would take it out, so that's where you're going to bed later. Be honest, Dale. Is, is the truth of this story that your parents would shout through the door, what are you doing in there? And you'd say, nothing, just bashing the potato. <laughs> you haven't asked me why I stopped, and this is why you'll uh, realise... Oh, Dale, 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 why did you stop? Because Mrs Marks, who was our next-door neighbour, I heard her talking to my mother in the driveway, <gasps> and I heard Mrs Marks say to my mother, is he still sleeping with a potato? <laughs> I think that they've been talking about it, and she probably said to Mrs Marks, did any of your children ever want to sleep with a potato? <laughs> so what are you thinking, Lee? Miranda. I sort of want it to be true, because he's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I do think the two winning things are that that's where you're going to sleep, yeah. and Mrs Marks. What do you say? Is he still that's sleeping the thing. With I it? think Mrs yeah. Marks exists. Yeah. yeah. And I like Mrs Marks. Yeah. <laughs> I like what she represents. She represents the sanity of the street. And the beauty Whereas of... Whereas the Wintons... Mm. They're all over the shop. So what are you going to say, Lee? What's it going to be? Okay, what do you think? I think do you think it's true? I do think it's I true. I think it's true. All right, I'll go with my team and say that it's true. You're saying it's true? OK. Dale Winton, the potato in the bed. Was it the truth or was it a lie? I have slept with many things over the years because I'm a very old man, but I have never slept with a potato. Oh. It's a lie! Oh. Yes. It was a very convincing lie. As a child, Dale didn't sleep with a potato. <laughs> Richard, you're next. OK. Uh, when I worked in McDonald's, my long-term girlfriend joined the queue to my till, and when she got to the counter, she dumped me. <laughs> Lee. Oh. Lee. Lee, Lee, Lee. 
So how old were you? I was uh, uh, 18. I think I was 18. OK, and so you're 18 years old. Then. How long did you consider a long-term girlfriend to be when you were 18? Well, she was actually my first girlfriend. Uh, her name was, presumably is, uh, Kate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not in touch, she could have died. I mean, I don't know. You know but, yeah, look yeah. on the bright side. <laughs> 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 Kate Dumpton, was she special? She was, uh, she it's was... It's a special K joke. I'm not explaining it anymore. <laughs> Is special K, Rob, or do I have to mention crunching on cornflakes? Well, I think when it comes to breakfast cereals, there is one that stands head and shoulders <laughs> above all the rest. <laughs> so, long, how long was long term? Two years. But when you're 18, that's a long term. Can you remember what she said to you? I can't actually, Miranda, I know. But what made it doubly heartbreaking was I, I, I loved that job. And. What? Uh, well, you didn't get a sack, <laughs> did you? Well, no, but, it, but I was very. I loved the job. And then she came in and broke my heart at this place that meant so much to me. And that added to the emotional impact of, of what she said. What, you, was it, what was it about you, the job that you loved so much? Let me tell you a fact about this place. This is amazing, <laughs> right? Yeah. The, the, the regular meat, which is the meat that goes in their signature burger, it goes from frozen to fully cooked in 44 seconds. I found this amazing. Fascinating. I, I wonder well, why she dumped you. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I think we should get back to the girl. Well, she got to the front of the queue. She dumped me there and then. And I left my station, didn't serve the other customers. And then I went to the storeroom and I sat on a box of gherkins. <laughs> And I cried my eyes out. Oh, that's gherkins for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, Kate put in her order. She puts uh, in her order and says, I would like... Oh, Kate. Kate. Oh, Kate. 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 Oh, that changes Kate. everything. What's her name? Oh. Kate. Hang on, Richard. What's her name? Said... Special K joke doesn't work. I didn't want to say anything. No. Kate. Oh, Kate. That's Kate. Yeah. Kate. I thought it deserved a bigger laugh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I wondered why the hell you said it. <laughs> Always trying to work it round to crunchy nut. Leave him alone. <laughs> no, I don't. Richard, you be young Richard, okay, at the counter of this fast food outlet. Okay. David, yes. you are a normal customer. Okay. Dale is Kate. Oh. <laughs> Could I please have a, uh, a, a fillet o fish, but with no cheese? Ah. Hold the cheese, no, it, hold the cheese, and put the cheese on the chips, please. <laughs> But not with cheese and bread. Excuse me, where are the toilets? <laughs> <laughs> they're just... Uh, they're actually just next to my till, actually. The door's just about uh, there. I'll, uh, See you later, Kate. You <laughs> got <laughs> wow. Oh, gosh, it's my girlfriend, Kate. Hello, Kate. Well, I thought I'd come in and see you tonight. I haven't heard from... <laughs> Meryl Streep in The Iron Lady. <laughs> I'm afraid, Richard, um, it's over. Um, you're just not my kind of guy. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, so, what are you thinking, Lee? Is this, does this sound credible I'm to you? I'm suddenly going truth, and I think he was dumped in a queue okay. at said burger joint. At said burger joint. I, I find it staggering that he remembers all the facts that he remembers about how long it takes meat to defrost, and yet he cannot remember what she actually said There's when she got to the that. front of the queue. But is he... The answer to that is he's a man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lee, what's it going to be? Truth or lie? Are we going... You're saying lie, Claire, is that what you're, you're saying? saying? Miranda says true. Yeah. Go on, we'll go with Miranda and say it's true. You're going to say it's true. OK. Richard Bacon, was that the truth or was it a lie? That story is true. <gasps> oh! <laughs> well done. Well done. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yes, it's true. When Richard worked in a fast-food restaurant, his long-term girlfriend joined the queue to his till and dumped him when she got to the counter. And then, to rub salt in the wound, she ordered a happy meal. <laughs> <laughs> our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. And it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guests, Robert and Will. <laughs> Uh, so, Claire, what are Robert and Will to you? 
This is Robert and Will. They do my garden. And to avoid the embarrassment of me ever getting them mixed up, I call them both Barry. OK. <laughs> Lee, how do you know Robert and Will? Uh, this is Robert and Will. I once used them to convince an audience I could teleport people. <laughs> And finally, Miranda, your relationship with Robert and Will? This is Robert and Will. I was a judge at the Identical Twins of the Year Award <laughs> and uh, they came third, but we had to disqualify them because it turns out they were two of triplets. Wow. <laughs> there we have it. So, Claire's green-fingered Barry's, Lee's teleporting to some or Miranda's cheating triplets. Uh, David, where do where'd you begin? <sighs> Explain the rationale behind the <laughs> identical twins of the year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, when I was asked to come along and judge, I, I was a little confused, yeah. but um, I think there's a sort of magazine or trade magazine or it's part... or there was some... A trade magazine? Was... What, what's, <laughs> what's the trade? <laughs> twins! <laughs> The, the marketing of twins. Twins. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of that. I've actually heard of the competition, yes. There is a competition to do with twins. What do they have to do in the competition? Well, there's the physical look-alike thing, like how much they look alike. <laughs> okay. right. And then they also do kind of um, games, like Mr and Mrs type games, so it's a personality thing as well. How did they do? Did they win, or...? No, they came third, but they were then disqualified. What? Oh, because of the triplets thing? Yeah. And we did see a third, but I didn't see it, but apparently there's a third one. So the, so the triplet turned up to this event? Yes! <laughs> that's, that's not exactly Moscow rules, is it? The third one was um, picking them up to take them home. <laughs> <laughs> and was seen. Uh, Claire, Robert and Will are your gardeners, mm -hmm. and you call them both Barry. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a bit of a, a f sort of an affront to their individuality? No, because the first time I did it, I said, would you like a cup of tea, Barry, love? And as soon as you put love on the end of it, they're fine with it. They just smiled and had a cup of tea, and they were fine. And uh, uh, do you know, a lot of... Um, when sound engineers work a, a lot on outside broadcast, they all call each other Percy. They all call each other Purse, and so they call me Purse as well, and I call them Purse, and I call them Barry. Yeah. Why? <laughs> because they work with so many different people, they can't actually remember everyone's name. Are you sure they're not trying to mug you? Purse! Purse! Purse. <laughs> Those nails, they're very clean for gardeners, aren't they? Well, I oh, hope they've had a bath before they come tonight. No, but yeah. they are they are pristine, beautiful, soft hands. Mm. Um, do... I'm not coming on to you. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, if you want to go and have a look, you can. Thank you very much. I'd love to do that. You're not so... allowed to touch, but you oh, can look. Yeah. Do you want to have a look, Jay, or would you like to Not that particularly. Place? Really? Oh, we'll go on there. Uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm now not as attracted to these hands as I once was. There's actually some dirt under the nails. All right. Uh, Don't touch, Dale. Just could look. you turn it, them it... over? I feel I should have a look as well. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, 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 sort of, it'll look unconscientious. <laughs> this, this here, so, this here looks like it actually. Yeah. <laughs> that could be the remnants of soil. Yeah. <laughs> They're not very big, so... You know what your gardener's hands look I like? I don't know. I'm like everyone else here, apparently. I don't have a gardener. I know, you probably expect I'd have about nine. <laughs> what did you think of what you saw there, Richard? What did, how did the hands rate for you? That's actually really thrown me a little bit now, and I sort of slightly regret going over there, to be right. honest. What, what um, did they look like? Well, from this distance, they're beautiful, pristine, manicured hands, and actually, close up, there's some, there's some dirt under the nails. I hope to God these right. poor fellas are gardeners. <laughs> Which there was not, it... by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lee. Yeah. Uh, now, you're going to bother going through this one, aren't you? <laughs> what was this particular show? <laughs> you, were, you were trying to pretend to the audience that you were able to teleport people. Correct. Was it a stage what? show or TV show? It, was it a stage show or a TV show? Oh. That's funny. Are you an interpreter of Dale? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd said it. I'd missed it, so yeah. I was asking my team captain. Yeah. So what's your friend saying, David? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? A stage show or a TV show? Okay, uh, it was a stage show. And where was it on? It was on at the Hackney Empire. And when was it on? <laughs> it was on in the mid '90s. And what was it called? Um, it was a new act competition for new people, and I thought I'll. I'll do a magic trick because it'll impress everyone. Yeah, make up for the comedy. <laughs> um, what... 
Well, you turn the end. I'm sorry, everyone, but I can right. teleport! <laughs> Talk me through the act. What did you do? Yeah, magic yeah. circle, love. Magic circle. Right. Can't, can't tell you anything. Okay. Okay. Tell us. So, <laughs> what's, yeah. the, what's the illusion we're supposed to be seeing? So, I'm not going to tell you how much it's going to be magic circle. You're not going to say how you made it look as if you could teleport. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. oh, I see. You're yeah, no. very wise. <laughs> we'll never... I'm not giving away my secrets on television. <laughs> so, go on, Lee. What, what did you do? You, you're there on the stage. The so audience stage, are enwrapped. I, so, I come on and I bring someone out of the audience and then I put them in a box at one side of the stage, or in a cupboard, actually. I put them in a mm. cupboard. And then I do a bit of the showbiz magic. Yeah. Said a few words. Can't remember now. Might have been Alakazam. <laughs> and then uh, did a side, and then I open up a box, and out comes the first person who's gone in. Out the other. Well, it looks like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but clearly, he's already in the box, and mm. he sits down. And the audience give me a big round of applause. So that's actually quite good. And he goes and sits down in the seat. So you've done the teleport thing. Then what do you do? Straight into the levitation. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Actually, as a technique for a magic trick and trying to make it look as though someone's magic to cross the room, it's actually quite clever using yeah, the identical yes, twins. Thing. Do you well, still do it in the app? Don't tell me, tell the judges that night. Uh, well, <laughs> how did you do? Awful. Came third, turns out I was a triplet. <laughs> right, we need an answer. So, David's team are Robert and Will, Claire's green fingered Barry's, Lee's teleporting twosome, or Miranda's cheating triplets? What do you think, Dave? I think it's Lee. I think he's telling the truth. OK, uh, Richard, what about you? I, uh, I don't believe Lee. And they had a bit of soil on their hands, I think, the gardeners. David, what about you? I don't think Lee did a random magic trick at the beginning of his <laughs> tryout spot at the Hackney Empire in 1995. Maybe he did, but I just... I don't believe it. So I think I, think I agree with Richard. I think it's Claire. I think you it's, think it's I think Claire. Claire? Yeah. OK, here we go. Robert and Will. Would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Robert. I'm Will, and Lee tried to convince an audience that he could tell you. <laughs> yes. Lee used Robert and Will to convince an audience he could teleport someone. Thank you very much, Robert and Will. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies. And we start with... <coughs> Lee. Possession. Right, there's a box under the desk, Lee. Uh, now, I'd like you to take the item out of the box and hold the object, then read the card out, please. This is my dibber. I donated it to the British Lawnmower Museum, where it is now a permanent exhibit. <laughs> right. uh, David. What is a dibber? What's a dibber? Uh, a dibber? That's a good question, David. <laughs> and would you believe me if I was to say I don't know? But it's a... it's a guy... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> I'll mind it for you. That's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Could be any of these okay, that yeah. <laughs> It's, 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 it's to do with gardening. <laughs> so what does your dibber do? Pardon? What does your dibber do? Are you, are you Fred Flintstone? <laughs> <laughs> Answer the question, what does your dibber do? Um, not 100 percent sure, but I guess I would say that a dibber is for pushing holes in the, in the ground... Yeah. ..and then maybe popping something in there, like a seed. I, I see. see. How did your dibber... Come to be in the British Lawnmower Museum. Um, I'll tell you, Inspector Morse. <laughs> have you ever been to Southport, my hometown? Uh, I have, yes. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Can I start again? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. I have never been <laughs> to the British Lawnmower. <laughs> I, I was online. I was online. But it is in Southport. It is in Southport. Yeah. That's true. And I did see it online. What did you put into Google that that came up? Uh, well, you don't want to know that. <laughs> but I noticed that on the website there was a bit that said that the, the tools of the rich and famous. Famous tools, that's what I typed in. <laughs> <laughs> there is actually, I do know for a fact that there is a British Lawnmower Museum because I myself have donated a trowel. You haven't. I have, honestly, Rob. I donated a trowel. To what the is British this? Lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> Surely they want a lawnmower. <laughs> 
So you saw the Lawnmower Museum online. Online. With a list of celebrity artefacts. There was quite a few. There was the Brian May um, from Queen had given a lawnmower. Joe Pasquale had given a strimmer. <laughs> so what, what happened then? I thought that'd be a nice thing to do, wouldn't it? Because my home Sorry, style... Sorry, you, you, decide, you saw that and you thought, I, 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 I want a piece of that. I want a piece of the action. Prince Charles, he gave some... This is where the story's <laughs> falling apart, cos one is... No, asked... that's not where the story's it's falling it, apart. No, <laughs> <laughs> but one is asked to donate to... You don't... I you wanted give... to donate something. I thought it'd be quite nice to have something of mine, cos it's my hometown. So you picked up the phone. I picked up the phone. <laughs> You're still doubting my abilities, are you, Derek? <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> <laughs> it is not your ability to make a phone call. Who made the take... phone? <laughs> I went, are you, I are you the... seriously saying that the fact that you could have physically made this phone call means I should believe that you did? <laughs> You say, phone. look, I could have made the call, I'm physically capable, therefore it happened, David, end of story. I picked up the phone, I phoned them up, I said, I'd like to donate something. They said, what have you got? I said, uh, Dipper. <laughs> you knew its name? Well, actually, I, I, yes. You knew its name, but you didn't know what it was for. That's actually not true. I okay. said... So what did you say? I took advice before the phone call. From whom? From who? From whom? I'm not doing it if you put an M at the end. All right. From who? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Who's putting the M at the end? Do you know what I mean? No one yeah. anymore. Who no did one. you take advice from? <laughs> I shall you tell you. You found a thing in the yeah. shed, you didn't know you owned it, you didn't yes. know what it was. Who did you ask about it? You want to know from who? I want to I want to know who you asked about that object <laughs> in order to find out what it was called. I shall tell you. Well, please. David David Tennant, or as I call him Doctor Who. You asked <laughs> You asked Doctor Who. Doctor Who. <laughs> who did you ask? Tom Baker. <laughs> <laughs> there are seven billion humans on Earth. Please let's not eliminate them one by one. <laughs> Uh, I, I asked my wife. So, David, what do you think? <laughs> is Lee telling the truth or is he lying to Dale? us? Dale? I don't believe a word of it. <laughs> if it is true, it's one of the best acting performances I think I've ever seen. Thank if, you. You've got if it's true. If it's true. Do you think, you think it's true? No, I do not. No, it's, yeah. so it's a lie. Okay, David, yeah. what are we you going to say? We think it's a lie. You think it's a lie. Okay, uh, Lee, truth or lie? <laughs> it is, in fact. <laughs> true. Oh! <laughs> Not only is it true, but how exciting is this? We've got a picture. <laughs> there it is, in situ, <laughs> at the British Lawnmower <laughs> Museum. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? Eh? Just a simple tool who donated his dibber to the British Lawnmower <laughs> Museum. <laughs> Next. <laughs> it's Miranda. I once embarrassed myself in front of the local vicar at Christmas. <laughs> Is that it? Vague, isn't it? Is but, that all we're getting? Well, no, we can, we can get more. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Well, uh, it was Christmas, and um, the vicar had to come round to my aunt and uncle's where I was having Christmas. Um, the sort of drinks, I think. I went, went to sit next to him and sat sort of... <laughs> and sat on, a, on the edge of a sofa. Mm. And as I sort of sat back like that, I I broke enormous wind. <laughs> and did he say anything? He he sort of <laughs> he's here. <laughs> um, he it, I, no, I don't think he did. Which which is what made it so funny for me. Why did you go over to sit next to the vicar to start with? Because um, I think my sister was there and I thought, oh, no, she's been lumbered with the vicar. And I thought, oh, well, she might need some conversational help. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Which I sort of provided. <laughs> what what but, direction was the vicar at this point? I don't know if he was down or upwind, but he was involved. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he can, you saw uh, his hair move. <laughs> I think actually what I, what I did that was... That is a great image. <laughs> <laughs> I think I burst out laughing, did one of those laugh spits. Oh, laugh spits? <laughs> so having farted at the man, you then spat on you know when you, you know when you go... <laughs> I did. Oh, right. I did. So I was like... <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, David? What are you going to say? Mm. Miranda. 
the way you told the story at the beginning, I couldn't work out. You had a lot of pauses in there. Was that for effect, or were you thinking it up as you went along? And I think I think probably worth it making it up as you went along. So I, I think it's possibly probably a lie. Mm, Dale, what do you think? Miranda is like one of those fabulous people in the world who's uninhibited with no. Am I right? You're kind of like, oh, what the heck? I don't. My care. face is a mask. <laughs> so you think it's true? You think it's a lie? Yeah. I'll say I think it's true. You think it's true? Yeah. Okay, Miranda. True. It is actually. Or True. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yes, it's true. Uh, Miranda did embarrass herself in front of the local vicar. Next. <coughs> oh, it's me. When I'm in a play, as part of my nightly vocal warm-up, I perform sets of scales in the voice of a chimpanzee. <laughs> okay, will you give us a quick rendition? Of course. <laughs> it's just you just go through the scale as a chimpanzee. Do you just do this for plays? Because I've been next to you in a dressing room, I think, for a gig, and I didn't hear chimpanzees. I used to do a singing tape of oh, and then what? That was lovely. That was lovely. Yeah. And um, <laughs> la. Don't blow your nose. <laughs> Rob, where did you get this from? Who, who was it? Another celebrity that gave you the no, idea? No, no. It was one night I was doing it, and the other actor uh, said when I, I started going, hoo, 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 so it's just relax. Hoo, hoo, hoo. He said you sound like a chimpanzee. So then I went, hoo, 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 and I found it really opened up the diaphragm, and, and it actually can you, worked. Can you go the other way? Can you go from the high note? That's down what down Dale down was down. asking me earlier. Um, <laughs> Is he angry, Lee? Is he angry? Well, I, it's hard to tell what colour his face is, but can you go... <laughs> can you go... Can you go from the high level... <laughs> oh, excellent. That is, I think that is good. Who was the actor who said you looked like a chimpanzee? Miranda, you know very well he didn't say I looked like a chimpanzee. <laughs> You're not going to trip me up like that. It was Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Branagh gave you this idea. He did. Yeah, laugh it up, Balding. <laughs> <laughs> I know your reaction was. Tonight. The reaction was how preposterous. <laughs> <laughs> the man with the breakfast cereal would be in a play with Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> Yet it was true. <laughs> so what are you thinking? Mitchell, Winton, Bacon. <laughs> I think it's true. You think I it's think true? It's true. Yeah. Do you think it's true? Oh, Dan? absolutely. He does it yeah. so well. I think it would sort of help. Yeah. Uh, what about what about you? Balding, Mac, Hart. <laughs> that sounds like a series of illnesses, that way. So... I'm afraid you've got Balding, Mac, Hart. <laughs> so what are you going to say? I think he's probably lying. I think it's true. Imagine you're saying true. You're saying true. You're saying you're right old hoot doing that yeah. together. Yeah. You yeah. say. No, well, I'm going to go with Claire. You're going to say lie. Yeah. You're saying lie. You're saying true. 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 It is, in fact, a lie. <laughs> It's a lie. When I'm in a play, I don't perform sets of scales in the voice of a chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that Lee's team have won by four points to two. <laughs> but, of course, it's not just a team game. And my individual liar of the week this week is Dale Winton. <laughs> Yes, Dale Winton, a man who lies so much, I don't know how his wife and three children put up with it. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>would you believe me if I said that actor Damien Lewis is tonight's guest host? Well, it's the truth. Have I got news for you? Next, and then country file, it isn't. Tim and Lee are on a camping weekend. Finally, they are going out at 9.30. Or if it's drama you're after, head over to BBC Three now for brand new lip service.